Hey, um, sorry, look, I know it's been a bit of a long time, I mean, I think it's been a month or something since I've done, like, anything proper of a, actually, probably, like, two months now, almost, since I've actually put anything on here. So, I'm sorry about that, I've just been super busy, but hopefully, now things are getting more back to normal, I should be able to actually put things on here again. Anyways, this video was f f recorded, like, 11th of April, and it is currently the 12th of June. So, like, two months ago this video was recorded now, and I meant to post it literally two months ago. So, sorry about everything, but hopefully I should be back to, like, posting normal videos now, and I guess roll the video and enjoy. Alright, well, if you're here, you obviously read the title, and you were interested, you were like, Vim, this person, used Vim for one year as their only tax editor. What? H how do people live about VS Code? Okay, I'm sure you all know that people obviously don't want to use VS Code, and I was just like, you know, doing a little bit of joking, but yeah, in all seriousness, I have only really used the only text editor, Vim, for a year. I haven't touched VS Code, I just wanted to go over one of my thoughts, my experience of, you know, kind of going full Vim, why I think if you have the time and you actually want to, which I guess if you click this video, you want to, why, in my opinion, you should go full Vim. So, I'm first going to talk about why I switched from VS Code over to Vim. And now, one of the first things is, when I was using VS Code, I was using the Vim extension in it for, like, five months before I switched to Vim. I just started to notice, I saw these people doing this really cool thing in Vim, which I couldn't really do in VS Code. And I was also having to touch the mouse to do so many things. I was thinking, why do I have to touch the mouse to do this? I just want to do it all on my keyboard. And then, I just realised one day, I was like, wait, but Vim has all of that. And I can just configure Vim to be, like, VS Code. When it clicked, one day, I was like, nope, I'm full Vim. So, I think it was February 18th, 2021, I went full on in Vim, and like, I've just been Viming since then, man. Now, yes, of course, when I went full Vim, of course it was really hard at first, I was like, ah, I can't even use my tax editor, and I was like, running it for like, weeks, I was like, I can't even code, man. But eventually, I kind of just picked up how to use it a lot more, because I already knew the basic key binds, I picked up the more complicated stuff, and stuff like the configuration, I never went out of my way to learn Vim or, or Lua, but I kind of picked up a bit of it over time, like, with Vimmel, it sucks to learn, but with Lua, I never really went specifically out of my way to learn it other than once, but I knew was doing it for like a week, it didn't really do much. And I kind of just picked up Lua every time, and if you didn't know, I do have my own plugin, by the way, you know, to do me daddy, which you could check out right over there. You know, it's pretty beautiful, it's a good plugin, you know, I'll show you what it does in a minute, quickly, you know. A little self-promotion, I've also got a video on it, you know, you can check it out. We're looking at this beautiful Go code over here. You can see, well, a lot of times we'll leave thing like a to do comment, say like to do Yoni uh, stuff. Beautiful to do comment, but we'll leave all these comments everywhere, and there's no easy way to hop to them. So, with my plugin, but you know, to do me daddy, I can quickly press my hotkey, and I can see everywhere I have the word to do and a to do. How great is that? And of course, I'll show you something else. Uh, if we have like a mark, if we have the smart down file, if we add a markdown to do a test over here, we can, uh, we have an option uh, over here, which allows us to get the markdown to do this too, which I think is pretty, pretty cool, you know, if, if you ask me. Anyways, back to the video. Now yes, learning Vim at first is, well, it feels like an internal struggle, I'm going to be honest to you. Like, you're like, wait, why am I using HJKL to move up, down, left, right? Why am I even using the arrow keys? It's confusing at first, okay? I understand. And you're going to be thinking, why am I even doing this? Or why I should just switch to VS Code? And now, yes, most people, if you don't have the time, just switch to VS Code, man, honestly. But with Vim, if you really want a bit of time, I think it's well worth it. So it's not going to make you better at coding. I'm just, I feel like I could speed you up a bit. Do keep in mind, though, it's not going to speed you up where you all of a sudden have, like, 50,000 weeks and you don't have to do anything. It will speed you up a bit, though. You might save a bit of time throughout the day and get more done. Along with learning Vim, I'm not saying you'll never touch someone like an IDE again, such as IntelliJ. What I'm saying is you'll probably never want to touch someone like VS Code again, like a text editor. But sometimes you do end up needing an IDE, especially if you're doing Java, you couldn't need an IDE, man. Don't, I would recommend it with Vim, but... You know, like TypeScript, Go, Python, all of that stuff, you can really miss that in Vim. You usually may need an IDE, and then I'd recommend just keeping like a IntelliJ around for that. I don't even have an IDE on my computer, but if I were to do Java or something, well, I'd want an IDE every once in a while. I'd probably just like install IntelliJ and get along with that. Now, there are plenty of ways you can learn Vim. There's hundreds, thousands, millions upon gazillions. And, well, there's multiple, so I'm going to show you some quickly right now, indeed. 
Well, if you just open up any random terminal, if you just type Vim, oh, Vim Shooter, they have this lovely little screen that tells you everything you need to know about Vim. It's saying to you, Vim, yada yada yada, attention, yada yada yada, how to move, and telling you it's HJKL, so if you know, you don't need the arrow keys. Now, along with that, you can obviously just type in literally Learn Vim onto Google or Brave Search for Lord Search Engine, and you'll see hundreds upon hundreds of ways to learn Vim. Or you can, of course, type in Learn Vim on YouTube and watch a few videos on how to learn Vim or why I use Vim and so much more as, you know, Vim's best video. It's just a few little things I'm going to tell you if you're, well, learning Vim for the first time. One, Vim used to be called VI and there's like hundreds and hundreds of different distributions of Vim. Well, not hundreds, but there's quite a few. I, is per I personally use one called NeoVim, which unlike regular Vim has allowed you to do your whole config in Lua and you'd have to worry about Vim all, which sucks. Uh, built on LSP and quite a few other nice little features which regular Vim doesn't offer But I just recommend learning with regular Vim and then slowly moving towards something like NeoVim Maybe if you want built on LSP or regular Vim works fine for anyone But yeah, so if you ever hear anyone talk about VI, that's all, basically the original version of Vim Which all stands for VI improved. Great naming by the way. No, I will not be giving the secret power on how to exit Vim That's a power only one has achieved. Okay, now I want to talk a bit about for a minute Well, my experience of Vim and like how Vim's kind of benefited me. So what I've noticed since I switched to Vim, this just could have been so if you know over time you obviously learn more, but I feel like I've actually become a better developer and I've kind of understood more. And along with that I was kind of sort of to understand more about the Unix philosophy and Unix in general. Well Linux too, you know, GNU slash Linux actually. And along I have just been able to understand it when I actually switched to well most of my workflow to Linux by the way, Arch Linux by the way, everything just felt smoother and I was more easily able to understand it. But by the way, if you don't, if you, if you don't know, by the way, I, I use Arch Linux. You know, along with that, I was able to get Cody done so much faster. I don't know what it was. I just felt like mm, speed for twenty sixty nine foot for twenty. I you know, but I mm, I just felt so much faster when editing. I was just like boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna change that. You can do it all in Vim, baby. Now I thought instead of just leaving you telling you about Vim. I don't, I give you a quick example of me doing some things in Vim. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you quickly me working with some things in Vim quickly. Alright, so right now if we jump in here, we've got a bit of an error. I'm just going to use the mouse show you. as I do have mouse enabled on Vim, just if I can show you guys it's easier stuff like this. Anyways, I'm importing utils in this user file, but along with that, the utils bar is importing user, and, well... Go doesn't like that man, so we're gonna have to move this most likely. So let's just quickly move that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Shift V to highlight this. Go 2K to go up, X to delete it and clear it to my clipboard. Control W out, move to this split. I'm gonna 17J to go up. Sorry, 17K to go up. Uh, K to go up one. Make a new line. Go like that. And I'm gonna press P to paste that in. Beautiful. I'm gonna delete that. If DW, which deletes word, pretty standard, makes sense, I think. Let's jump back to the split. I'm gonna go to the bottom with, well, I'm gonna go to the top with capital G and bottom with GG. Back to the top. Sorry, top is GG. I always get it the wrong way around. I'm gonna go down here, just delete that line. I'm gonna go over there. We're gonna now run this code. Go run. Oh, what do you like about this? Undefined type, use as no field, get all users. Ah, oh, right. It's capitalized that. Now we run the code. That works. Beautiful. Now we need to integrate this members thing. Okay. Wait, I could just go everywhere. So I'm going to do a thing called find and replace over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press let's zoom in a bit. As you see, we have quite a few places where if utils will get full name. I don't really want to go through each one and change utils to get full name to user to get full name. So I'm going to press colon to go into command mode. Percent S to replace everywhere. I'm going to search for users to get full name. Right. Okay, so if anywhere else has utils, so you never know if I'm anywhere else. I'm going to replace that with user dot get full name. So that replace every utils to get full name. And the reason I did that is, let's say I had utils. Let's do so I can actually call it. Says I utils to ask for input somewhere. If I said I just want to replace the utils, 
with user, that's going to replace everywhere, including up here, down here. I, I don't want to do that. I only want to replace the areas well, I want to replace. So, imported and not use. We don't need the utils imported there now. So, uh, you, you can kind of see how this works, how it makes it feel smoother over time, man. Alright, I'm just going to go over here to this Python code. I copied the exact same thing using V to not block highlight, but like highlight one at a time, kind of. I don't know why, I just clicked my fingers. You go down here, I'm going to press Y to yank. I'm going to go over here, paste that in. Go over there, paste that in. There you go, beautiful multi line string. And we're going to. Uh, this will be equal to input. And I'm going to input declare but not use that. So I'm going to go over this in another video at some point in the future. How I'm going to autocomplete all these errors, but yeah, I'm going to go 10 down over here. What I'm going to do now is basically going to say switch. I'm going to break a switch. I mean, it's pretty standard coding. Now I'm going to go into normal mode. I'm going to jump in between the brackets and to, you know, get formats on save. I shall show you that quickly. Well, yet again, that is. Uh, I can't. This will be in another video at some point, hopefully in the future. Formatting on save. This is done with this basically. Every single time I write a buffer, a buffer, one of these windows is just called a buffer, basically. It's going to call vim.lsp.buff.formatting, which formats it. It's pretty standard. All right, so now we're going to add stuff to it, switch case statement. So I'm just going to add this in quickly. Then I'll speak to you. It's going to take a few minutes. Oh, beautiful. I forgot to capitalize everything here, which makes it, you know, like allow you to import it. <laughs> Would be helpful. Alright, there you go. So I kind of coded this up and I was able to use Vim. To speed this up, which would have been a bit of a slower process if I weren't to use the Lord's text editor Vim. So, of course, I can now run this. I can, you know, S sign up. You only because no, no, no. The user it's ready. Well done, Yoni. Uh, let's do it again. We'll call it test. Oh, test two. Yes, yes. All right, now, of course, we go over here to use the JSON. We have test. Apparently, we have to stash that in there. Still, we should probably remove that at some point. Beautiful picks area volunteering. I can of course see members who are working as volunteers. I can see I should probably format that better. I can see members who work in the entrance gate. I can see members who work in the gift shop, painting and decorating. I can see members who are gonna pay that seventy five dollar fee. No one nice. I can and I can just see to exit. It's pretty nice. Now, another cool thing is that Vim has hundreds of plugins, so let's commit this. Space GS will open a thing called Git Fugitive, uh, Vim Fugitive. Go over here, S for stage, CC, opens up your traditional Vim commit window, and I can say feet uh, member stuff and stuff in main dot go. Main dot go is almost done. I mean, terrible commit message, but hey ho. And I could do this all without ever having to, you know, like go into command on over here, get add dot. I can avoid that whole mess and just do it all nicely from within Vim itself. Now, yes, I understand that not everyone has the time to learn Vim, and it can be a definitely time consuming process. I mean, it would take one to three weeks to learn and also configure everything that you want so that, you know, it works smoothly and you can use it for coding and everything. But if you have the time and if you go into this point in the video, I'm sure you're dedicated to learning Vim. So go out there, learn Vim, and remember, make sure you tell everyone you use Vim, by the way. Oh, and the reason I use Vim daily. So I still don't know how to exit. How do I exit this? How, what? There's no way to exit. You don't leave it. Once you're in Vim, you're in Vim forever. Vim.
you don't change Vim. Vim changes you.